Social work as a global profession, bridging the local global divide in social work education and practice. I'm going to highlight some, con some concepts and practical approaches for bridging the local global within the framework of social work as a global profession. For this presentation, I will provide an overview of global definitions and concepts common to the social work profession, two conceptual models that bridge the local global divide, and support indigenization of practice, the role of field education in localizing global values, concepts, and standards, and some practical approaches for teaching social workers how to translate the global into the local. The profession of social work's attempts to internationalize education and the profession were initiated in 2000 with the establishment of the Global Qualifying Standards Committee, a joint committee of the International As Associations of the Schools of Social Work, and the International Federation of Social Workers. This resulted in the adoption of the global standards for the education and training of the social work profess profession in 2004. I specifically want to point out that the definition was not and is not meant to be finite and static, um, and the committee called for, and I quote, a continued critical assessment for its relevance for respective national and local realities, end of quotes. My comments will focus on that part of the definition that parallels the indigenization of knowledge and practice. Based on the global definition, the social work profession promotes social change, problem solving in human relationships, and the empowerment and liberation of people to enhance well-being. Utilizing theories of human behavior and social systems, social work intervenes at the points where people interact with their environments. Also, principles of human rights and social justice are fundamental to social work. It is an inclusive definition, but at the same time it reflects the need for local translation. And I think this is the key. Social work intervenes at the points where people interact with their environments. And this can only be done at the local relationship level. This broad approach to environments supports the dual focus on the individual and family within the local and global political, social, economic, and physical structures. So basically this reinforces the importance of collective decision-making processes and methods with social work practice. Another important characteristic of social work is that it is contextual or context-bound. It is embedded in the laws, policies, and practices that define social welfare and protection. It is embedded in the political, social, and cultural structures that define human relationships and community. The social work education incorporates knowledge about national and local policies, structures of programs and services, and the needed skills for negotiating the local systems of care. Some authors suggest that the problem in social work is not necessarily the application of global concepts, theories, and standard practices, but what some have said, some have called the misapplication of concepts and theories to programs and practices. Indigenizing or localizing means paying attention to process or the how-to of doing things. The processes of inclusion and problem solving bridge the person with the environmental context. So in other words, it requires staying true to our principles with a focus on how the processes and models are applied at the level of contact with clients or client systems. Again, the interface of the client or system. And just a clarification, I'm using the word client or client system, although there are many different terms that refer to the persons and systems social work serves, users, consumers, beneficiaries. So using client system expands the meaning beyond the individual to include parent and child, family, a whole community, or organization. So now I want to review those shared um, or common models or theories. 
There are shared concepts and models that I have observed in my recent review of social work education and training curricula in Malawi and Nigeria and the work I'm doing on a case management toolkit for the countries of the former Soviet bloc. These are also consistent with social work's person and environment approach to practice and basically assume the indigenization of practice. These are theoretical models that are usually part of the generalist practice courses that apply across the different intervention methods. So social constructionism and structural social work and social development uh, and developmental social work. First is social constructionism. Based in social constructionism, human vulnerability and social problems are social constructions with multiple realities. For example, there are multiple realities on the definition of child, family, need, poverty, as well as social work. Next, structures are intended to be understood as sets of narratives or stories and the related socio-cultural and local interactions that have persisted over time. And often the meanings become institutionalized, such as orphan, disabled, etc. So in practice, based on the principles of structural social work, the social worker first explores environmental factors and then later personal and individual factors. This is, the ver this is very different from the remedial and individual psychological model that emphasizes individual pathology. Also, structural social work supports the application of collective practice methods that bring about change through advocacy, family and group work, community organizing, and organizational change. And also change comes by shifting power and the social construction or meaning of our labels or words that we use, child, family, need, problem, and also including solutions and ind indicators of outcome. The next model is social development. Social development refers to a qualitative change in the structure and functioning of a society that helps a society better realize its goals and objectives. It facilitates and supports rather than prescribes. Social development requires tangible investments that facilitate participation in community life, including child participation. Also, uh, it, it means that you make tangible investments uh, which might include job training, employment, child care, literacy classes, micro enterprise initiatives, and asset savings. So the application of social development in practice requires competencies in advocacy, community development, and organizational change, very similar to structural social work. So in many parts of Sub-Saharan Africa, the social development model applied to social work is called developmental social work. It supports a mutually inclusive approach to universalism and relativism and that also supports social justice and equality outcomes. So I think we have to teach social workers and students how to contextual, contextualize the global principles. Field education provides opportunity for teaching and learning how to indigenize global concepts, values, and standards. It brings life to all of those theories and words. So some practical approaches I use uh, access descriptive information on the local reality through the gray literature. This is the literature that's not published in peer-reviewed journals and books, although in my experience, peers do review it. And the other plus is that it is open access, available on the web, and often written by those that do publish. So examples from the Malawi curriculum include documents like uh, the Poverty Reduction Strategies, Making a Difference, Fighting Poverty in Africa, or Malawi's Growth and Development Strategy, as well as other UN documents that are specific to Malawi. Next, bring field to the classroom, if at all possible. Social work is a professional education, so it lends itself to recruiting students already practicing, uh, but do not yet have the professional education. Uh, in Malawi, they are initiating their social work program by recruiting within the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Welfare. 
also use well-prepared practicing social workers as part-time lecturers for social work practice methods classes, if at all possible. Or, if that's not possible, uh, bring in practitioners as guest lecturers. Uh, so they can um, add a lot to um, the classroom. And also, I think this is a very critical one, and that is teach reflection and critical thinking. Reflection and critical thinking is what I call the so what of social work. Here are some examples of what I have used. In class and on written assignments, including exams, I use questions that specifically ask for practical applications, such as, what are the key principles of social development? Describe how you applied it in at least two examples from your experience. Also describe how it was not applied. Another example is stating a principle and then asking how it is applied in specific cases, such as, a principle of social work is working as an equal partner with the client. How do you experience this in your field practice? Identify several conditions that contribute to inequalities in the social work client relationship that you have observed. So basically, the more case specific the teaching can be, the stronger the bridge between the local and the global.